Hi, this is Commerce Specialist. Welcome to my channel where you'll find content covering learning outcomes of various academic qualifications and professional certifications, including life-changing business ideas and concepts. In this video, I'm going to discuss about capital asset pricing model. Normally, we call it CAPM. We need to understand what is capital asset pricing model. Please remember, we all in some stage of our life do investments. Especially accounting and finance students are highly recommended to make investments after careful analysis and research. So if I am an investor, I want to buy shares of a company, uh, obviously I'm investing because I'm expecting certain return. So what is my thought process? So if I want to invest in a company, number one, I'm looking at risk. Now when I'm looking at risk, risk related to the investment. So the very first thing I need to look at, what are the investments available in the market which gives minimum risk or in other words are risk free. So if you are in USA, we are talking about US Treasury bills issued by the Federal uh, Reserve, right? So in US, the investment which carries almost zero risk are the US Treasury bills. We call it USD bills. If you are in UK, we are talking about any, uh, you know, uh, instrument issued by the Bank of England. If you are in India, we are talking about Reserve Bank of uh, India. And if you are in Pakistan, we are talking about State Bank of Pakistan. So, in other, any country, when you are talking about instruments, investment opportunities, which are backed by the government of that country. So, especially if you talk about US, we are talking about US T bills. Now, if you invest in US T bills, because it is backed by the government, it has zero risk or we call them these are risk-free investments. But if they are risk-free investment, that does not mean they don't pay us a return. They do. Let's suppose if I invest in US Treasury bills, they give me a return of 5%. So this option is open to all the investors. So if I want to invest, the safest investment is investing in US Treasury bills. But obviously, they are paying me a lower return because it is very safe. It is less riskier. And by default, investors are sort of greedy. They would like to invest in companies which gives higher return than the US Treasury bills. So let's say US Treasury bills gives a return of 5%, but there is company X where I, if I invest, they give me 8%. Now, they're giving more than US Treasury bills. They are not fools because those investments are not as safe, as riskier as the US Treasury bills. They are far more riskier. So higher the risk, higher the reward. In other words, if the US Treasury bills are paying 5% and a company is paying 8% means they are paying me a risk premium because this is a private company. It's not as stable, as secure as investing in US Treasury bills. So I hope you understand. So if I'm investing, I'm looking for risk free this much I need, but I'm willing to take a risk if there are higher returns. So other companies, if I buy their shares, probably they are they are promising a return of 8%. For example, they're paying me a risk premium risk premium is whatever is over and above the risk uh, free rates or market uh, returns, you can say. The market return of any XYZ company is 8%, US Treasury bill is 5%, so the difference is the risk premium. But as an investor, I also have to look at the third element. First element is risk-free, the other is market risk. The third element is, where am I investing? Which company am I investing? How risky is that particular company? So if I'm talking about the risk related to a particular company or a particular industry, I'm talking about unsystematic risk. And if I'm talking about the risk for the entire market, like US market, UK market, Gulf market, I'm talking about systematic risk. You must have heard that don't put all your eggs in the same basket, which means do not invest all your money in the same company or in the same industry. What if that industry goes down? You lose your money. So a rational investor, what he does is he has 
a balanced portfolio. That means I may invest some amount in oil and gas, some in banking industry, some in automobile, some in FMCG, so that my portfolio is balanced, the risk is balanced. The important concept is when we are talking about the risk of the market, the risk of the market is always considered to be one. Now what is beta? Beta measures the volatility of a share price as compared to volatility of a market. So I'm looking at three important elements when I'm investing. I'm looking at the risk-free return, the minimum risk, uh, the minimum return which is promised by the government. I'm going one step forward because I need more return. So I'm looking for companies which offer a higher rate of return, obviously which will be more than risk-free. So if risk-free is 5%, they are offering 8%. But I also need to look at the systematic risk. Systematic risk refers to the risk the entire market, all the companies, industries operating in a market, they are exposed to. And the measure of systematic risk, or in other words, the measure of risk is basically the beta. When I'm talking about systematic risk, I'm talking about risk for the whole market. So beta for the whole market is always equal to one. Okay, so I'm not investing in the whole market. I'm investing in one company. So I need to look at the beta, the risk of investing in that particular company. I hope you understand. So what I look at is, I'm looking at the beta of that company. The beta of that company means, how does the return of the companies are affected if there is a change in the overall market? For example, if the overall market goes up 10%, does the return of my investment, the company in which I am investing, it also goes up by 1%? If the market goes down by 10%, does the uh, returns of my investment in that particular company also goes down by 10%? If that is the case, I am talking about beta equals to 1. Which means, I am talking about beta is a Greek letter, it's uh, written like this. If beta is equal to 1, that means the my investment, the company or the industry in which I have invested response to change in market is exactly the same. If the market goes up 10%, my investment goes up 10%. If the market goes down by 10%, my investment goes down by 10%. So my investment behaves exactly in the same way the market behaves. What if a company where I'm investing it has a beta greater than 1. This means my share is very volatile. If the market goes down by 10%, there is a chance that my investment goes down by 25%. If the market goes up by 10%, my investment go up by 15%. That means there is a lot of variation. Any investment which has a beta greater than 1 is considered riskier. But there is a possibility that I am investing in a company which has a beta factor or beta coefficient of less than 1. So that is considered less riskier. Less than 1 means greater than 0 and less than 1. Only risk-free investment has a beta equal to 0. But that does not mean, yes, it is risk-free. Theoretically, when we say a company has a beta, uh, companies, uh, you know, a security means a share of a company has a beta 0, that does not mean that it is risk-free. It means historically there is no correlation between the movements in the share price of this uh, company and the movement in the market. Okay, beta equal to zero, yes, theoretically we said that these are uh, risk-free investments have a beta of zero. But actually it does not mean that it has zero risk. It means that historically we are unable to conclude that if there is any correlation between the movements in the market and the movement in the uh, returns of this company or this share or this security. 
what is very interesting to understand is that companies can have a beta which is actually negative beta now what does negative beta means negative beta means if the market is going up the returns of this uh, investment is going down if the market is going down this company is performing well which means if the beta of a security or a portfolio is negative that means my portfolio my investment reacts inversely to the trend in the market so if the market goes up the returns of my security falls if the market falls the return of my security goes up so there is an inverse relationship now why it is important to have uh, you know some securities some investments in our portfolio which have negative beta it helps let's say i have invested in 10 different companies my portfolio comprises of 10 investments uh, eight of them has a beta which is let's say uh, equal to 1 or greater than 1 which means uh, they are affected with market trend especially if i'm talking about beta equals 1 like if the market goes up the investment goes up if the market goes down the market, uh, investment go down but then what if if i have some investment which has a negative beta which means for my normal uh, investments when the market goes down my return goes down on those investment but my investment which has negative beta when the market goes down my investment goes up my return goes up according to capital asset pricing model if i am an investor how would i know what should be my required rate of return if I'm investing in a security? First, have a look at the formula. The investor's required rate of return is represented by R. The formula for capital asset pricing model is R is equal to risk-free investment, risk-free rate plus beta into market rate minus risk-free rate. So what if, if I tell you the risk-free rate, the going risk-free rate is 5%, beta of a company is 0.8, the market returns, returns of the overall market is 10%, minus risk-free is again 5%. So how it looks like? So I think this will be 4. So this becomes 9%. Now if you look at the market rate, the return in the market is actually 10%. And I am my required rate of return on that investment is 9. Why my required rate of return is 9 less than the market rate? Look at the beta. Beta is 8, which is less than 1. Less than 1, if the beta is less than 1, that means my investment is less riskier. If it is less riskier, my required rate of return is less than what the market is offering and I'm okay with it. Why? Because if the risk is less, I am okay to settle down for a lower return. But at the same time, what if we are talking about uh, risk-free rate, 5%. We are talking about beta of a company being uh, 1.5. Uh, the market rate remains the same, let's say 10%. What is my required rate of return? Investor's required rate of return. Now pay attention that the beta is 1.5. Beta 1.5 means greater than 1. That means wherever I'm investing, whichever security or portfolio I'm investing is, it's riskier. If it is riskier, my required rate of return has to be more than what market is offering because I'm investing in a riskier venture, right? So my required rate of return, which is R, is equal to risk-free rate, which is 5%, plus beta is 1.5. The market rate is 10%. These are all percentages. Minus risk-free, which is 5. So my required return would be 1.5 into 5. is 7.5 so 7 and 5 is how much 12.5 so investors required return is 12.5 percent so i as an investor 
would expect a return of 12.5 wherever I'm investing. Why? Because the place where I'm investing, the company I'm investing, the portfolio I'm investing, it has a beta of more than one. Uh, it has a beta of more than one. And beta more than one means riskier. If this is high risky, I'm expecting a high reward. High reward means more than the market rate of interest. So ladies and gentlemen, this is what capital asset pricing model is all about. It, it tells you how much return to expect looking at three elements, the risk free rate, the beta of the company and the market rate. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave a comment. I will respond. If you like this video, please share it with a dear and near one so that others can also benefit. Thank you so very much for your precious time.